Hello viewers, Super GT here. We are on Gran Turismo Sport once again. So some Group 4 action for you today. Now look at that. This, this is a rare occurrence. Super GT is on pole position. It doesn't happen very much. I did quite a lot of practice. Um, well, maybe up to about 10 laps of qualifying. Managed to put in a decent lap in the qualifying. Pole position it is then into the first turn. So through there, okay, we should really be able to get through okay. I mean, if you're on pole position in a single file race and you're not first by the end of the first couple of corners, you've done something majorly wrong or someone else has smashed you off most likely. So we've got a Lamborghini hot on our tail. Also the Renault Megane. We'll see just how good that thing is in a straight line. Down into turn number four, a little bit wider the apex. I'm going to run wide, well actually just onto the kerb on the exit through there, through turn 5, then up the hill towards turn number 6. This is where the, the handling section of the circuit begins. The Renault's looking up the inside, of giving him space on the inside line. Squeezed him a tiny bit on the second apex, but he's through on the inside into the complex area now. The Lamborghini comes weighing in. And now look at this, it's a four-way battle for the lead. Two by two formation at the moment. The Renault makes contact with the Lambo. On the exit there, the Lambo's going to drop back, and now I can just about hold it around the outside, maybe, yes, leaving space for the Lamborghini, but there we go, just settling back into second position. I've gone for the Mazda Atenza, so I looked at the qualifying statistics, and a couple of the top times, say maybe three or four of the top ten, were all in this car, so I thought I'd give it a go. But then coming out of the final turn, onto the very long main straight, which isn't entirely straight, but it's all flat out. You can see here just the difference, how big that difference is between the Mazda and the Renault in a straight line. That that Renault's obviously got some uh, power behind it. And you can see he's just going to drive away by about a second or so there. Just dipping up two wheels beyond the white line. Extend the entry slightly, a little bit too deep on the brakes there. The, the Renault actually pushed away the two cones. So there are some, lot, well, there are lots of cones laid out around the circuit which kind of help you with turning in where to break but this guy's obviously just smashing them out of the way making it harder for everyone else so coming down the long straight then downhill the Lamborghini giving me, uh, giving me a bit of a bump draft so clearly he's going to play the tactical game here play it long it, it is a 10 lap race so there's no need to be too aggressive too early and actually I think the problem I've got there through turn 4 definitely too wide off the apex and uh, it's costing me on the exit basically so the Lamborghini quite easily able to drive up the inside through turn five and then get the drive going up the hill. So the Lamborghini up into second place. So, I mean, given that I was qualifying in first position, I ought to have the pace to uh, win this one. But you never know if the other guy's got a bad lapse in their qualifying session. So we shall see about that. Looking back towards uh, the fourth position, you can see there's a, a developing gap. So at this, this point of the race is actually quite crucial, really, I think, not to really attack each other too much so we're, we're kind of just driving around at the moment just really trying to extend that gap uh, you're kind of just trying to work together really to try and get away I, I, if anything it's a better to be in a three-way battle for the lead than a four-way battle because you've got more chance to win if there's less people in that battle so uh, coming down the main straight you see it just tucked into the slipstream of the Finnish guy in the Lamborghini and once again, the Renault just really, really just drives away very nicely. Looking up the inside then, it kind of opened up for me, so I thought I might as well go for it. And it's just about a good move, just click, uh, clicking the apex there quite nicely. You see going over the kerb, but the track limits are very relaxed around there. You can kind of, as long as you keep two wheels on the kerb, even if you're way beyond the white lines, it, it registers as clean. So the game kind of allows that. So we're going to see the big difference in this Renault. In this Renault compared to my car throughout this race you'll see that down the down the straights he's definitely got the power although just down that straight just now obviously he got a bad run out of uh, the curb of the soul so that's why I gained down there but typically he will be getting away on, on the main straight so I'm gonna have to do all the damage through this section here so the the tighter corners this is where he's gonna suffer and then um, down the long straight he's gonna get away so ideally I need to try and get ahead by this point and then maybe extend a bit of a gap so that he doesn't come straight back past me on the main straight. So I am looking for the inside line. Looked up the inside, didn't quite open up though. He did uh, just about defend well enough coming across. And then through this corner, it's actually 
very tricky to get flat out. It looks quite easy, but it can be difficult um, to do that one flat out. Into the final turn, easy to break too late for this one. Clicking with the apex very nicely. I think he just about missed it. I'm looking up the inside, but he's just done enough here because I'm not going to be able to obviously get past him with that straight line advantage that he's got. So he's just going to extend that gap. So that's lap number three complete, near enough anyway. So it's, it's good to do a long race actually, 10 laps here. So plenty of time for the race to settle down, calm down, and um, f you know just try and set some laps, get into a rhythm, and and then maybe fight towards the end. You see on the map, I don't know if you can quite see on the map there, the field spread isn't too big. I mean, for the first three of us, we are a couple of seconds ahead of fourth. But then maybe from about 6th to the end, 6th to 19th or 18th, it, they're pretty much nose to tail. That is really good. I, that's what I really love about the Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, the matchmaking does seem to be very good and it does put you with uh, roughly equal people so that you can always have a close race with someone, even if you're not at the front, if you're at the back or the middle, you're, you're going to have a, a, a good battle. Presumably, anyway, not all the time, it doesn't always work. So a little bit deep through turn six and seven. The Lamborghini then going to appear on my right hand side. There he, there he is. He's up the inside. So a bit of uh, ragged driving here. So sometimes it's easy to drive well in qualifying when there's no one around you. But when someone's right on your tail putting pressure, it becomes a different story. And uh, that's something you have to deal with in racing. So a couple of corners left on lap number four. The Lamborghini's going to try and have a go now. I wasn't too dissatisfied with going down to third here I kind of thought if the Lamborghini can have a go then um, we'll see what he can do he actually pushes the Renault a little bit wide there and uh, takes the track limits to the full extent I don't think he quite cut what the game considers to be uh, dirty so just keeping two wheels on the curb just about so I'm going to tuck into the slipstream I think maybe the Lamborghini is slightly slower than the Mazda but that might possibly just be because I'm slipstreaming him so looking up the inside again it's a repeat of a couple of laps ago start of lap number five looking up the inside into the center s i am on the inside and then it's just going to open up so again just taking all the curb and maybe and almost a bit more so through there we are back up into second place so not bad but all this battling is just going to help that renault to slightly get away is he going to bump draft me yes he is so you see when, when someone does that you know that they're they're cooperating basically you know that he's not um he's not in it for himself he's in it for the for the long run he wants to for us both to ideally catch up. Once again, I make that mistake. I'm making that same error every time through turn number four, uh, Decido de Lago. So once again, you see I'm quite con content with settling for third place. I'm just gonna let him go. Uh, like, like I said earlier, you don't wanna lose too much time. So just settling behind, I'll let him attack the, the Renault and uh, see if he can do anything about getting into first place. Then maybe if he can start getting ahead and blocking him, then I'll have my chance. So looking at, looking behind once again, you can see that the gap is about four seconds behind. So we don't really have to worry too much, although any mistakes from us and then fourth place will be straight back on us. So you can't really afford to make any silly errors. Though so far we've driven nearly five laps and it's gone quite well so far. So um, quite good. Actually, look at that. Really, really struggling for a bit of oversteer on the exit of the final turn onto the long straight. And you see this time actually the Lamborghini is a lot closer to the Renault as he uh, probably has ever been in this race so far. But of course it's not going to be close enough to ever say that Renault is an absolute beast in the straight line. There's going to be no chance of getting through. So over the line that we go, that is half of the race done. And uh, it's been nearly 10 minutes so far. It's going to be just under 20 minutes I think this whole race. So 142.8 is my fastest so far on lap number 3. I'm going to have to try and pull in a quick one here to try and... Uh, just narrow that gap a little bit you see it's good actually it's really good on this game having on the left hand side you see the the gaps to the guy in front and to the to the to the leader and to the person behind so uh, just above my name it's got to the the gap to the person in front so about 0.3 seconds um, just below 4.5 or just over four seconds to the person behind and then the red the red number just to the right hand side of my name is the gap to the lead so just under a second so it's really useful to know that so you can just keep glancing at that just ha just um, keep check of is the person behind me gaining am I gaining on the person in front am I gaining on the leader is the leader getting away from me 
and um, all, all of that is very useful information. You need to try and take that into account if you can. Lamborghini, look up the inside. The Renault's going to kind of turn across him, if anything. It wasn't the cleanest of moves, but then again, I don't think really the Renault gave him much cooperation. Kind of just turned across him once he was up the inside. So the Lamborghini then up into the lead. Let's see if this can uh, translate into a race win for him. I'm going to have to try and get through if I can. The Renault drives very wide. I'm going to go through up into second. But we're going to have to see if that's going to be enough. Because we know that, that that Renault, with its power unit, is going to really try and get back past quite early. I'm going to force him to the outside the best I can. Make him go the long way round. But you see, he's just easily going to win the drag race. I haven't got much chance of beating him. Unless I just go for a kamikaze lunge into turn one. Not quite going to happen. I, I thought about it. He did break quite early. I just tapped him. And he's, he is then going to settle into second place. So again, just like earlier in the race, I can't really afford to start fighting too much. Otherwise, the leader will get away. Looking up the inside, I am definitely quicker through the corners. He's just on the straights where he really is OP. Please nerf. Though on balance, I say the lap time is about the same. It's just very hard to drive against someone who has such an amazing advantage on the straight lines. And uh, if he's ahead of you going through the corners, which he is here, then he's just going to be holding me up. So th this is the crucial part of, this, uh, part of the race, really. I need to try and ideally get back past him before the end, before that Lamborghini tries to pull away too much. Although it has been a very nip and tuck race so far. This has been one of the closest races I've had in this game. You think three of us have been going nose to tail for about, well, seven laps now. And look at that, the Renault's just going to nudge me wide. So not playing completely fair at the moment. I think I gave him plenty of space. He should have maybe given me a bit, bit more room, but getting a, getting a penalty there. For some, you know, that's there are irregularities with the penalty system. And actually, I just braked a little bit there just to get the penalty out of the way. But I know um, from experience or from YouTube comments, actually, a lot of you have been helping me with this, that I should probably just leave the penalty there and then eventually it'll just, it'll just go down by itself when you just slow down and stuff so on that occasion I wasn't quite thinking straight so as a result of that you see now I'm actually going to lose quite a lot of time so this is going to be the biggest gap that there has been I'm still over four seconds ahead of fourth place but hopefully all I can hope for now really is that the Renault really attacks the Lamborghini and then they slow each other down or that I can put in some really good laps and try and reel them back in so coming through uh, Curve de Sol onto the back straight going downhill and yeah still in third place but we're running out of laps just three laps remaining now can I get this corner a bit better just almost going to clip the apex I think I need to just absolutely abuse the curb on the inside and that will really help me around so kind of like you, you take the center rest you can just abuse the curbs and you kind of need to do that through there otherwise you're just going to be drifting right for days and you're going to be losing so much time so, into the infield section once again. It looks like the Renault is kind of catching up, but he's going to struggle through this section as we've seen so far. The Lamborghini, I think, has just driven the most consistent race of the three of us so far. Although, to be fair, we have been fairly equal, not been much in it really. But that is really testament to the matchmaking system. It, it, it has worked here and it has produced a very good race so far. So couple of corners left you see the the Renault really struggled on this lap for the infield the Lamborghini's just driven out a massive gap now um well not massive but by the standard of this race massive um just gonna have to slow down there I did nudge him wide I know he's kind of nudged me wide before but I'm just gonna let him go back past and uh, resume his second place so probably not the best place to do it because now I'm going to be suffering for this entire straight it's not going to end well for me so he's going to put out a massive gap looks like first place is um almost off the cars unless he makes a big big mistake so we've got two laps remaining to try and to do anything perhaps about just getting second place so through the first corner through the second apex through there nicely you love the center s absolutely brilliant corner and through the curve de sol onto the long downhill straight towards Desquito de Largo turn number four the one that I've been getting consistently wrong in this race uh, so there's those two cones there you I think it's actually a little bit too late those cones I think you have to break a little bit before them so I'm hitting the curve quite nicely just just running a little bit too wide on the exit every time so clearly not adapting my driving I just need to really change the way I'm driving through that corner at least that's probably cost me over a second in this in this whole race just getting that that one corner consistently wrong 
And imagine just taking away a second right now, I'll probably be ahead of second place. But that isn't the case. I'm going to have to try and do something else. Well, I mean, we've got one more lap. We can try to perhaps get it right on the on the final lap out of 10. And once again, through this section, gaining on the Renault. So he's obviously struggling through here. I think it's just basic handling. Um, so obviously he's just handling. It isn't quite as good as mine through that area. And looking up the inside, bits of contact. Nothing too sinister though. Up the inside, there we go. On the brakes, we're going to clip the apex very nicely. We're through. And that is a uh, very tidy move. And it's going to be a very close call now. As we go into turn one, is he going to be able to gain enough speed to reclaim second place? So second place would be a nice result here, even though I did start on pole. But, you know, it, it was still a good race. Second place would be nice. So I'm going to force him to the outside line once again. And see if he can just about do it with neck, uh, neck and neck going in. Side by side. I've got the inside line. And I was on the brakes the whole time. I think there was a bit of contact, but I mean, I was turning in and braking, there's nothing I could do. I think he perhaps had to just back out of that one. And the gap's going to open up now, so this is the lap where I really have to nail it, especially this corner coming up. I know I've been getting it wrong every time. That gap's actually opened up quite a bit there. Over a second now, we look at the timings on the left-hand side. Into, oh, there we go. Into the apex for once. One, one out of ten, guys. Ten percent of a ratio there of hitting the apex of turn four and this should be a second place now because we've seen it we've seen it so many times the Renault struggling through this area so car choice is definitely important here um, on the track that you're doing you need to take into account the overall strengths of each car they're not all the same but they are roughly balanced in terms of overall pace I'm not sure if there are any OP cars from what I've seen on the leaderboards it's kind of really varied you, you look at Forza it's always it's almost always just one car dominating the top 10. On this game, it seems like there's lots of different cars, which is good to see. It's good to see that there's choice. You don't always have to pick the one car that's overpowered. And uh, coming through the final turn then, it's going to be a second place. And in what was a really, honestly, a very good race, it wasn't always totally clean, but it was good to have three people battling that close for that long. It's very rare in this kind of game, a 20 minute battle between three people. Uh, plenty of respect. I think on on balance, the Lamborghini deserved that race win. Very consistent. Didn't really put a foot wrong and um, just made clean overtakes and just drove out at the right time. Just drove away whilst myself and the Renault were just too busy fighting with each other. But there we go, guys. More Gran Turismo Sport action for you. I do hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed being part of that race. There are the final results. So just 2.2 or 2.3 seconds behind the Lamborghini at the end and then the Renault began about a second behind me. So it was a good race on, on the whole, really enjoyed that one and hopefully there'll be uh, plenty more like this in the future. So of course do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. I shall see you next time guys, thank you very much for watching as always, goodbye.